might celebrate and go to laundry. Oh shit, that's not seven o'clock. But that's where the silver is. Love the sound of the bird call in the morning. If it's not raining, opening my roof and sitting up there, it's the best start of the day. Good morning. I'm at a place called Nant Head. I think it's about 1,400 feet. Oh, put it down here. <laughs> Cause you know, I can't remember stuff like that. I stayed here last night, a very peaceful night in the empty car park. So I'm just gonna go for a little wander around today. This was uh, one of Britain's first purpose-built industrial villages and it was built for the lead mines. I've never seen a lead mine before. I'm still sporting my uh, fashion accessory. Oh. There's uh, silver here as well, silver and zinc also. Uh, zinc ores were mined after 1860 until 1920. I believe there's been a, some new boreholes going down to investigate just how deep the seam is for the zinc to try and work out how much is there. So there is a possibility that it'll be remined again because at the moment this village is supported purely by tourism. Must have been grim working here back in the day. Bloody hell. The company that ultimately owned this for the majority of its time was uh, Quakers and they built the houses, uh, reading, building and school and stuff like that for the workers to come and work here. But still, I've already seen loads of wabbits this morning all around the van. It's weird, it's like being in uh, like a bird hide in the van. It's like animals can't see through the glass or don't register that there could be something behind the glass. I guess I don't know what glass is. Isn't that just amazing? You can see how the landscape has been changed by mining. But this was done back in the 1700s, early 1800s. And much of it would have been manual labour. Unbelievable. I'm so glad I wasn't born in an era where I could have been put to work as a child. I certainly was a very, very young man with very little options. So desperate to survive and had to turn to doing work such as this. Bleak is the word. You might have actually wait to work. Right, I'm keeping my eyes peeled for silver. If you see any, let me know in the comments. <laughs> There's a little door. I bet that's where the silver is. I think I've just uh, a major archeological find. That, my friend, is one of the original wellies. There's the other one from the workers back in 1829. Time ago. Fascinating. I did enjoy that. So, after putting the front seats in, one of the first things I did is put these windows in. Morning. I'm um, ridiculously early. Um, I'm at Van Glass Trade Windscreens. They're going to fit the side windows for me today. It won't worth me fitting it myself. I've done it before, but I was going to save 50 quid by doing it myself. quite a significant day today. It's kind of my birthday. Not that one, not that birthday. Do you remember this? I've taken the decision to give my notice. I will vacate the house on the 7th of May. It's the year today that I moved out of a house. So I've been living in a camper van for a year. And as you probably know, 
pretty much all and last year I was building this so I only moved into this the week before Christmas and uh, now the journey starts proper so it's a real significant day for me um, I haven't decided what I'm doing you know I might celebrate go to a laundrette so I've got a little visitor come to share my special morning with me today so that I'm not on my own which I'm not of course because you lot are here with me my new little friend want to keep it I think it would fit in here good morning have you got an itch <laughs> I can be want some breakfast now watching this little fella I do this all the time, I've got to set off on a walk and I brought my camera, so it's my phone, I hope it's alright, but I needed to share with you, just outside a place called Sedgwick where I stayed last night, and it's absolutely beautiful, this that I'm on here is actually a fault in the earth's crust. So we're going to France soon. And to do that, we need certain things for the van to get ready. Because it's now a private HGV, because it's um, registered for over three and a half ton, it's actually 4.1 ton that it's allowed now. I have to apply these around the vehicle. So I'm gonna check on the website where it has to be. But as far as I know, it needs to be about a meter on each side from the front and somewhere between just below a meter and one and a half meters high so it'll like be somewhere on the side on both sides there and uh, might cover up some of my runs in the paintwork and then one on the back so you see this kind of thing on hgvs in this country i don't think we put them on the sides just on the back and then i've also got to put we have like a crit air sticker which is to do with what emissions your particular vehicle is and I uh, need to check when I'm driving through cities which ones it affects and what have you. I've already got one in the van. This is actually one for the motorbike that I have to apply and figure out where to put that. I've also got some stickers to go on the headlights. So the headlights are designed to shine to the curb side of the road in this country as we're driving along. And because I'm gonna be on the other side of the road, that means I'm gonna be blinding the oncoming traffic. So it's a legal requirement to put these on and it just sort of blanks out that bit that would shine and blind them. So you've got more of a straight. So another thing that we have to do is apply some stickers to the number plates, I believe. I don't know if we'd have to or not, but I've certainly got them anyway. And some UK stickers to the back. Uh, I've also got some of these for the motorbike, but I got them a little while ago and I can't remember where I put them. So hopefully I will find them some point during this next week. So I'm just going to brush up on exactly where I need to put these and then we'll get them applied to the vehicle. Right, so we've got to be a metre from the front, which more or less takes me out of the door there. It can't come across the panel. Obviously, it can't go over that. So it's going to be to this edge here. And then we've got between 90 centimetres and 1.5 metres high. So my 90 centimetres is there, and my 1.5 is way up in the window, so it wants to be on that bit of panel there, on both sides. So I'm going to give it a clean first, and then we'll apply it. So I think I'm going to use this, oh, I don't know, no, because that goes up at an angle. I'll use that edge there, that's it. That one did cover up some runs to be fair. So now I've just got to apply the number plate stickers. Use them as a guide. Yes. It's a good place anyway, isn't it? There you go. Right, so I've got my thing to block the reflector. It's to go on at seven o'clock in relation to where my main headlamp beam is. This has all been cleaned. Lights have been left on around to warm up. And it wants to be about there. You can see it's not a very accurate science but uh, so that as long as you're within a centimetre, which is quite a big area, it'll remove enough of the reflection to make it safe. Oh shit, that's not seven o'clock. 
and I've taken the tape measure and had a right thorough measuring up and stuck this on my windscreen so when I'm travelling I'm not going to get caught out hopefully. <laughs> Decided I need to go today. I wasn't going to go until Thursday. I think what's been going on is I think subconsciously I've been apprehensive about starting this journey and I've been putting obstacles in the way without realising that I'm putting obstacles in the way. So the reason why we're going to be going on Thursday, it's now Sunday, the reason why we're going to go on Thursday is because I'm going to go to cinema on Wednesday. Now, come on, I go every Wednesday. So, after Wednesday, then I could have been saying, well, I'll wait till next week because it's a good movie on. Okay, there's no reason for me to, like, I have to be somewhere or anything like that. But there is something, actually, because we have 90 days now in Europe out of the last 180. And so, three months, which would mean... May, June, July, be back for August, September, October, and then I could be away for winter, which is, I really want to be away for winter. So I do need to get going, and I am concerned about me, my subconscious putting obstacles in the way. I think it's one of those things, it's the fear of getting started with something new. I just need to go, I need to go. But today, I've pulled everything out of the van. Now I've got a better idea of what I need more regular, easy access to. So there's been things that I've been climbing over, if you like, to get to, that I hardly ever use, to get to stuff that I use regularly. So I've had a shuffle and I've also, there's like a load of stuff that I'm now gonna go drop off at the storage. I'll make the van a little bit lighter and it'll be easier for me to get to the things that I do want to get to and do need to use. I mean, it's not the end of the day if I forget something. I think the worst thing is having too much stuff because if you've got too much stuff, you can't get to the stuff that you do want. It gets in the way, if you know what I mean. It's just dead space. So trying to whittle things down. I mean, I've got some winter coats in here. I think I might have a pair of salopettes and a skiing jacket. I doubt very much I'm going to be using that May, June, July in Southern Europe. <laughs> but there you go, anyway. I'll probably end up taking them out just before winter. <laughs> so we're off. We're going. I just need to have a double check, make sure. Oh, let's see, I'm making excuses already. Need to have a double check, make sure I've got all my paperwork in order, and then we're going south, getting a ferry, I think. I'm on the open road, no place to go. Just a man and his dreams living life in flow. With my camper van and my motorbike, I'm chasing the wind, catching every sunrise. Midlife crisis, now nah, I'm just getting started Feeling young at heart, my spirit uncharted Through hills and valleys, I ride with pride With the wind in my hair, I feel so alive On this open road, I'm finding my way Embracing the freedom every single day With my camper van and my motorbike I'm living my truth Chasing every high 